so <laughs> let's talk about Heroku build packs. Why, you might ask. Uh, because I want to run weird stuff on Heroku. Uh, and more specifically, I want to run 28 years old plotting software. Uh, as you know, my last lightning talk was about GNU plot, and this lightning talk is about me running GNU plot on Heroku. So, uh, as you can see here, GNU plot is not on Heroku, <laughs> sadly. Uh, so, to get that working, we will have to use build packs. And build packs is a feature that was introduced in the Celadon Cedar stack, which is the current stack on Heroku. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, the, it's at the core of the stack to support the, the polyglot pa platform that Heroku now supports. So the stack itself knows nothing about the languages uh, or the programs that run on the stack. Uh, instead, we have build packs that uh, sort of assemble the runtime environment. Uh, so, what is a build pack? Uh, a build pack is a bunch of scripts that are used by the slug compiler, uh, which is a piece of software that gets run every time you push your application to Heroku. Uh, and it gets triggered by a git post receive hook, and it uses uh, build packs to, first of all, detect which build pack it should use. So it looks at your application to figure out which one is the most suiting one. And then it uses the build pack to make a bunch of transformations to your application directory before it uh, takes that directory and compresses it into what's called a slug. And the slug is something, uh, it's, a, it's an archive that gets downloaded every time you scale up a new dyno. So it gets down downloaded and extracted into the dyno and then started. Uh, so the build packs are responsible for stuff like, uh, first of all, detecting what kind of application is pushed. So for example, the Ruby build pack will look at the Git repository and see if there's a gem file in the root. And if it is, it will return a successful status code, so it will return zero. And then the slug compiler knows that, oh, we should use the Ruby build pack. So what, what it then continues to do is to install the language runtimes. So for Ruby, it obviously installs Ruby. Um, and uh, then it continues to install library dependencies like gems, packages, and modules. Uh, and it can also be used to set up a default environment. So it can uh, set up environment variables. And if, if this is the first push to your application, the build pack can also set up add-ons. So for example, the Ruby yeah. one uh, will set up Postgres. Yeah, database basic. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And it can also be used to set up a default proc file. Uh, so the Ruby one defines console and rake, I think, apart from the web uh, process, which is the standard one on Heroku. Uh, so Heroku provides a number of build packs uh, by default. Uh, this has increased over time, um, but uh, Ruby is very familiar. Uh, and these are all open sourced, uh, so the, these are actually linked <laughs> to, the, to the different build packs. Um, but what's really cool is that Heroku also supports third party build packs. So you can uh, set the build pack of your application when you create it by using the build pack option, or you can uh, set a config variable or an environment variable in your application that's called build pack URL, uh, which should be a uh, URL to a Git repository where your build pack is stored. Uh, so this is really great, and we can use these third-party build packs to install Pinplot on our dyno, uh, and. The build pack we want to make will uh, consist of three different scripts. So first, uh, we have the bin detect script, which is uh, the, the thing that de determines whether or not to apply this build pack. And um, like I said, the Ruby one looks for a gem file. I think, um, like, the no, node one looks the for node, error. The node looks for a package.json, I think. Yeah. Uh, so they look for really characteristic stuff for the, the different kinds of application. And then we have the bin compile script, which is the script that actually does the work. 
it does the transformations to the application. So for uh, Node, it will uh, get the Node version you want to use. It will uh, run npm install. And it also has, has access to a cache directory so that it can store uh, like modules or gems between builds. So uh, that's why the, the push is now much faster because you don't have to run Bundler all the time. Um, and then we have the release script, which provides some metadata back to the runtime. So this is the script that can say, like, install these add-ons or set up um, Environment this. variables. Yeah, I think, yeah, the environment variables are actually stored in a profile.d profile. uh, script. But the, it can provide um, uh, process types, default process types. But uh, what is really great is that there are existing third-party build packs. Yeah. So in this case, we won't actually have to build our own to install GNUplot on Heroku. Uh, so these are a selection of the, the third-party build packs that exist. So we have Haskell, which I think we use for our um, Carnival. Carnival common system. And there are a bunch of different, uh, different other ones, like Elixir, Erlang. Uh, there's an Emacs one uh, for all your Emacs web applications, of course, <laughs> or a common list Sweet. one. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, it's, it's not only for languages. The, there are also ones for Middleman and Jekyll that will accept uh, a Git repository and then build your Middleman or Jekyll site, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the one we're looking for is the Heroku Build Pack apt. Uh, and because the dynos are running Ubuntu, we can use app get to install stuff into our application slug. And uh, to do this, we use the Heroku build pack apt. And this build pack detect script will look for something uh, called an app file, which is um, essentially a file with uh, all the packages that you wanted to install. Um, so one package per line, and in our case, we only want to install GNUplot. Uh, but there's a problem with this, and that's uh, that the the rest of the application that's not only GNUplot, it's uh, it, it's in, written in Ruby. So we also need the Ruby build pack, which is kind of a problem here because all we get from this is a GNUplot uh, executable. So then we can turn to another uh, existing build pack that is called the Heroku build pack multi. Which is really cool. So the Heroku build pack multi will uh, look at something called a dot build packs file, which will be a uh, a list of the different build packs you want to use. So now you can specify any number of build packs, and it will download them in turn, and then run the compile script, uh, and I think release no probably just the compile script of all these build packs. So. First, we will run the apt build pack to get GNUplot onto the dyno, and then we will run the default Ruby build pack uh, to actually uh, configure the environment for our Ruby application. So uh, this actually works, <laughs> and I have it running. Uh, the dyno is probably sleeping right now. I don't know if you can see the link at the bottom of the screen, yeah. but this is uh, this is the application I built, and it accepts data uh, in an in a parameter uh, with a kind of a wonky format, but <laughs> it's to sort of conserve space in the URL. So we send two different data series to this application, and it will generate a plot with the first series as um, x values, I think, and the second series as Y values. So if I click this, like this, yeah, it's waiting because it's booting up the dyno. <laughs> and eventually we will get a plot. Yeah. Uh, nice. yeah, and this is directly from Nimplot, um, just piping SVG back to the browser. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I think Heroku Build Packs is, uh, is a really great feature of the platform, and uh, it can be used for all kinds of different cool stuff. I think uh, some of the Heroku guys did a build pack where you would, uh, in your Git repository, you restore a, uh, a NES ROM, and <laughs> it would then, you would then push it to Heroku with a special build pack, and the build pack would create sort of a... I think it was a, an HTML page with a JavaScript thing that loaded your ROM. So it would make an emulator. Yeah, an emulator in your browser so you could play your games. 
So then you could push all your legit ROMs to Roku. So yeah, legit ROMs. <laughs> cool. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks. <laughs> Is that like uh, there's?